So I was a summer associate at Wilson Sonsini Goodrich and Rosati in the summer of 1984, so 31 years ago. And I got to work on a, you know, a few projects with Larry and actually as a summer associate, we went to Larry Sonsini's house and he, um, we had a little tennis tournament and I got to play as Larry's partner. So against another senior partner in the firm and another summer associate and I knew that we had to win that game. So, so we did and that was really fun. And then I got to um, got an offer to come back here to be a, a full-time attorney and, and then Larry started teaching at um, Berkeley at Bolt Hall School of Law where I was a student and I got to take his class. So it was phenomenal to have him as a teacher. He was just incredibly um, bright and had you know very eloquent um, stories to tell, real life stories that made the you know the securities laws come alive for me and you know just you know cemented in, for me that I you know this is what I wanted to do and where I wanted to be and spend my career. So I've had the you know, wonderful opportunity to work with Larry on some major transactions in my career and you know, from the earliest days worked on the Sun Microsystems IPO, on the Cypress Semiconductor IPO with TJ Rogers and, um, and then later in my career you know, spun Agilent out of Hewlett Packard and managed a, you know, a team very closely with Larry of over 100 lawyers. To get that transaction done, so so his influence on my career has you know been phenomenal in terms of just being able to work with him on transactions and and see the style of seeking solutions and being practical as you know as a lawyer as an advisor as a confidant for for our um, clients and just building relationships that allow us to get deals done and to create value for our clients. It's just been, you know, an incredible ride beyond my wildest dreams. So Larry's influence, I think, has been, you know, very broad and very deep in the Valley because he's, he's you know, developed relationships with both entrepreneurs and then the entrepreneurs, you know, often are serial entrepreneurs and they, they go on to, uh, to start new companies, to become investors in companies, to become board members in companies, so that the network, you know, has spread, you know, throughout the valley. So from working with the, you know, the founders of, of Sun Microsystems or from working with, you know, with Steve Jobs on, on Apple and then Next and then Pixar and then, you know, currently, you know, Larry is, is, and I are working on some other stuff related to um, you know, that comes out of the Apple relationship from, from years ago. So, so there's just this, you know, ever, never ending web of, of people that, you know, we get to work with because of the relationships that were built in the early days and that continue to this day because um, Larry's a phenomenal at, at maintaining those relationships. Well, I think in terms of Larry's influence on shaping the valley, that there's there's always been this entrepreneurial culture in the valley in terms of you know, people are risk takers and in terms of the, the way the legal community practices here that we don't try to cover um, every risk that you can't, you know, there's no time for that, that things move too quickly and that we really just try to be you know, solution. You know, find solutions. We we identify the risks, and of course, we want to keep our clients out of any legal trouble. But we don't try to tell them not to take risks because that's part of the culture, and that's what leads to success. And so, and then there's just you know a lot of the ability to bring people together and to have fruitful negotiations so that deals can get done and even when there's lots of big egos in the room you know Larry has the ability to be very eloquent and to to quickly uh, seize on what the key issues are and to come up with you know compromises or solutions that allow the deal makers in the room to actually make a deal Definitely, I would say, in, in terms of one of the the you know the hallmark transactions that I've worked with Larry on was you know spending Agilent out of Hewlett Packard. So we did not traditionally represent Hewlett Packard before that transaction. So that had been around for a company that had been around for sixty years, and at this you know pivotal moment in the lifetime of that company, 
they chose, you know, Larry Sonsini and our firm to take this company and, and to, to um, divide it up into two larger companies. And in that transaction, you know, Larry worked very closely with, with the, you know, the current board of the company and dividing it into, you know, two different companies. And then um, Carly Fiorina took over as a CEO at that time and Lou Platt um, retired. And we got to work with the, you know, the whole new management team and um, in, in influence to bring about, you know, two great companies in the Valley, you know, Agilent and Hewlett Packard. You know, I, I would, I would just say that Larry is very eloquent and that he's, he's still is so uh, phenomenal in his ability to take very, very complex matters and then be able to distill them down to an essence in a few key points and to get those points across to the client or, you know, to a board or to a classroom in a way that, you know, everybody can fully understand what the issues are and make rational business decisions. And, and that's, it's a gift. Larry, I just wanted to say congratulations on being inducted to the Global Silicon Valley Hall of Fame. There's no one more deserving than you. Mm -hmm.